if you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or any cheap PC games, use the referral link in the description. It will take you over to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods. And if you use the code CHEZ at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 5 of the AC Milan career mode series here on FIFA 16. If you go on to enjoy today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on any further episodes of this series or the My Player series, which will of course come to you tonight as well. So uh, we are a week away from the end of the transfer window. We have Empley at the weekend after our uh, two games in the previous episode, the results of which I won't spoil in case you haven't seen them, but um, feel free to uh, check the previous episode for those results and that video because we did make three signings in yesterday's uh, video. We have a little bit of money remaining but with the knowledge that we know we want to at least try and bring back one of Pato, Ibra, maybe Thiago Silva in the January transfer window, I'm not overly keen on spending too much more in this window. As such, what I'm planning on doing is offering new contracts to the people that have uh, less than a year remaining on their current deal so that, well, people like Montalivo will stay. However, if uh, we get Alex and Mexis to sign, we could then maybe sell them on in January and bring in Thiago Silva then. That would raise enough money for that, presumably. And people like Paletta, we could then perhaps call back from uh, loan then and to sell on. Same with Fernando Torres. And uh, we want to do the majority of that business in January. I'm going to be contemplating selling Keizuke Honda and uh, Kevin Prince Boateng in January as well. But I want those four, Boateng, Honda, Mexes and Alex, to be with us for the first half of the season. To you know, have the strongest possibility of uh, being in a good position when January comes around. So I'm going to go and offer these guys new contracts and use some of the money we've got available to us to do that. And then we'll push on towards the uh, game against Empoli. We are still trying to sell Diego Lopez in this window. He is the only person we currently have transfer listed. And uh, if he goes, that will hopefully, well, that will more than fund uh, these contract renewals, which will leave us with about the same sort of money as we have currently for either a last-minute cheap deal in this window or big January transfers. So I'm going to go and offer these people contracts, then we'll see what happens in the rest of the window, and we'll play Empoli. Almost everybody has signed those new contracts you can see here. However, we have had one email from Ricardo Montalivo that says he's turning down the contract extension. He thinks he wants to change and wants to leave. Now that makes me want to sell him in this window and bring in someone else immediately. If he's not going to sign, I do not want to let a player of that standard leave for free. So, in a desperate attempt to try and bring in someone else of similar quality, we are going to go out and try and buy another centre mid in this window now. And I think my target is Baselli, although he's just recently joined from Atalanta, so we won't be able to get him. Right, okay, I'm going to go out and try and find another central midfielder that is either Italian or domestically based, and uh, I will catch up with you in a moment. Done some looking on SoFIFA, getting some more feedback on Twitter, and uh, instant feedback from Twitter, because obviously this is a, an issue that is literally just the rose, and the, uh, the options we currently have, or the options I'm looking at right now, to potentially replace Ricardo Montalivo as he wants to leave, I don't want to let him go, but if he wants to leave, I'm going to have to make sure that I replace him. Jorginho is my preferred option. He was Brazilian, but he's recently, in the past couple of years, changed his allegiances to Italy. Now holds an Italian passport and uh, is available for the... Well, I think he's available for the Italian national side. I'm not sure, but uh, he is down registered as Italian. So uh, Jorginho would be my main target. I also have... Uh, was it Baselli? Uh, no, Benassi. Baselli was the guy I wanted to look at. But they also at Torino have Marco Benassi, who is also a pretty good prospect. Also, Stefano Storaro, whilst being at Juventus, was told on Twitter apparently Milan are looking to potentially loan him in the summer in real life. So I've added him to the list too. Three Italian targets, three targets based in Serie A as well. So they fit our criteria for what we want to do with this series. I'm going going to go in and offer for them now or do I wait? I might wait until deadline day just to see if I can get a brief glimpse at what their stats look like. Deadline day is not far away but we've had another contract offer accepted by one of the uh, the youngsters that we offered them to. Players leaving on international duty. Simic 
declined it. That's fine. It's not a problem. Uh, I think he had. I think I accidentally offered him an extra year when he already has five on it because I forgot to uh, sort the uh, the list by. Uh, date, but never mind. We'll jump into the game against Empoli. We'll play that, and hopefully, by the time transfer deadline day gets here, we'll have enough feedback on uh, Jorginho and Benassi and Storaro to be able to make an accurate decision. Although I have looked at their stats on Sto on Sofifa, and Jorginho does look like the biggest favourite by a stretch, so he's going to be my main target. But we'll wait and see, so I can visually show you in the video what people's stats look like. So we'll jump in against Empoli, hopefully get a victory, hopefully a similar performance to the one we put in against Fiorentina, and this time come away with all three points rather than nothing. He'll be touched by Zapata, and Backer's going to steal it off him. Quickly look inside towards Montalivo. Slightly lucky with the deflection, but we will take it. And I could play this through to Bonaventura, who's in the box here. Bonaventura for 1-0 AC Milan, and it's worked perfectly. The mistake by the former Milan player, who we've just sold to Empoli, to bring in Tonelli at centre-back, makes the mistake. You can see him there, having a go at his goalkeeper, seemingly. Nice turn by Maori, and the ball through to Bonaventura is absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. That was a weird way to say that. It was absolutely perfect. And uh, a lovely finish from Bonaventura on his left-hand side. His weaker foot into the top corner. AC Milan lead at home against Empoli after just 20 minutes. Come on, Stefan. Play you down the left-hand side. All right, back is going to pick up on it. Fair enough. Pull it back to the man on the edge. As Maori was involved in the first goal. Well, the only goal so far, but it might be a second. Bonaventura in again. Bonaventura! Oh, finish from the man at Cam. Moved him into a central role from out wide on the left to bring in that man, El Sarawi, back on loan from Roma. And he's got two goals now, Bonaventura, and that one was particularly impressive. The power on it, just ripping past the goalkeeper. No chance. The number 28 scores his second goal of the game. Absolutely fantastic strike. 2-0 Milan. Free kick to Empoli. Paredes is just going to dink it in, and he's flicked on. Oh, Donnarumma wasn't sure. Wow, close to Empoli getting one back. I was I couldn't really tell from the camera angle where that ball was headed, whether it was going towards that bottom corner or whether it was going wide. I'm not sure Donnarumma knew either, just clawing at it. Gets it away. Empoli still trying to commit to another move, but their cross isn't anywhere near as that free kick flick on. Really well worked. Knocked in and just gently lofted on, but a great, great save from Donnarumma to keep us 2-0 in front. We've got a corner. I see you stood there on the edge of the box. El Shiro will knock it back to Montalivo. Go for the Finesse. Oh, I've no idea how that's ended up in the back of the net. It took a massive deflection. It was looking like it was going to bend in the far bottom corner. And it's taken a wild deflection straight at the keeper and into the other corner. Or was it Zapata again? I think it was Zapata again. Yeah, look, number four down the bottom. It's on its way into the one corner. And Zapata pokes it into the other. Was it on target to start off with? I think it was. I think that's bending in that bottom right corner. But... Zapata, he's having a nightmare against his former side. 3 0. It's Paredes. Oh, into the box. That's going to be 3 1. Keeper misjudges the flight of the ball. That's the second time he's done that this season, Donnarumma. He did it in pre season and it cost us a goal in, I think, the. F was it the first friendly? No, it was the, sec the third friendly against Tigres in the group stage. He misjudged the flight of a, of a cross and got beaten to it, and this time. In fact, did he? Yeah, he's just, he's done the same again. In fact, this one is even worse because the, the ball is nowhere near the ball whatsoever. 3-1 Empoli, they've pulled one back. And Delivo steals that off Paradez. He's just going to keep running here, back as offside. He's going to put it in the back of the net. That is offside. He loves just playing on the shoulder of the last man, Carlos Backer, but it made me find your time in the past slightly better. It wasn't such a heavy touch in there from Montalivo. The run would have been made at a better time, or the pass could have been played at a better time, but never mind. 15 minutes to go also, and uh, we have a 3-1 lead. Saponara, formerly of AC Milan, and they're in again here, and I don't know what Donnarumma's done there either. He's just flopped over underneath it. Don't do this to me, Donnarumma. I want you to be an extremely good goalkeeper for me, but it's just as oh, it's just as well we've scored three. Otherwise, two mistakes from our young, inexperienced goalkeeper could have cost us a result here. There's still time for Empoli to push for a third in the 88th minute, but I'm just going to go defensive now and try and see the game out. There goes the final whistle. It's a 3-2 win against Empoli. Heart in the mouth stuff towards the end. We were in control, seemingly, when we went 3-0 up. Very convincing for the first 70 minutes of the game. Slightly dodgy final 20, though. So something to work on, but we do get the three points at least. Now let's try and get 
a centre mid replacement for Montalivo. Right, it's deadline day. So let's have a look and see if we've got any sort of feedback whatsoever on the three players we were looking at. Jorginho, we have. He looks, he is pretty good. This is so you guys can see what his stats look like. He, according to Sophie, for his short passing should be 85. So he, he looks like he's going to be towards the higher end of these spectrums. Uh, it was Storaro, who looks more all round, looks better defensively than Jorginho, perhaps. Yeah, better defensively. And Bonassi is kind of a mixture of the two. Now, I'm not sure how much any of them will cost. So I'm going to offer them a, a little bit plus. Apparently, he's probably going for... That's cheap, man. That's very cheap. Well, then, Montalivo plus three. I mean, they should accept that. Montalivo plus three for Jorginho, and he's the, be the best player of the three. So we might be able to get a really good deal here. Storaro, being at Juventus, is going to be an issue. Uh, yeah, since his arrival, we'll have to pay uh, more to get him out. But we'll offer them the same deal. And I wonder what they, my chief executive reckons that uh, Benassi was is worth. Let's have a look. We'll approach to buy. Reckon he, really? Why? Players are so cheap in Serie A, seemingly. Well, we'll offer them 1 million plus Montalivo. Just to try and entice them to accept it first time around. Because, of course, we don't have much time now. We are do have 10 hours left in the day. So, the biggest deal so far is Pastore to Arsenal for 32. Lacazette has gone to Man United for 31. And Pjanic has gone to City for 20 and a half. That deal has just gone through. Matteo Masaccio has gone to uh, Leicester City for £18 million. A deal I did not expect to go through. Uh, Fabian Oriana has gone from Celta to Monaco and all of the offers have been ex rejected. They're interested. They only want plus three for Benassi. That's fine. Uh, not interested in the player. Not interested in the player. Ah. Okay. So we've had no interest in Montalivo so far. What? I'll try and offer Montalivo plus cash again, but I have a funny feeling they'll reject that. I really want to get Jorginho, though. I really want to get Jorginho. So I'm not going to go for Storaro because it doesn't look like he's going to be able to come because Juventus just won't sell him to me because I'm a rival. Uh, Torino have accepted the offer. They're still not, still not letting me... Uh, still not letting me have him. Hmm, what if I just give you 8 million up front? I'm going to need to... Tra I think I've transfer listed. Pretty sure I've transfer listed... Uh, Go on. 35 is fine. I don't mind paying 35 million at all. Uh, important first team player. Benassi looks like he's going to be the man that comes in then, judging by uh, the way things are going so far. I would. Oh, Keeson Young has gone to Aston Villa. I would prefer Jorginho, but we can always bring Jorginho in another season because players like Kutska aren't really going to be here long, I don't think. They want 12 million for Jorginho. Oh, shit, the bed. I'll give you 10. Oh, I tell you what, what if I give you... It's going to be a, a push with such few, such little time left in the window. But what about Lopez and money? Uh, we will hold that for now, the contract offer for Bonassi. Anything else going to happen in this hour elsewhere? No big deals going through. Figueredo going to uh, Arsenal. Offer accepted. £4 million pounds plus Diego Lopez. Now, I, I don't want to bring in both, but Jorginho is my preferred. That would mean we would still have Montalivo to sell on at some point, either in the next six hours or in January. He is transfer listed, Montalivo, at six and a half. So no offers for him so far, and he isn't going to sign a contract. He would just sit and rot on the bench if he doesn't. So if uh, we end up going for... Jorginho is accepted. I'm going to get Jorginho. Four million pounds plus Diego Lopez. The deal is done. Montalivo's been replaced. Oh, no, do I get Benassi as well? I, do, I just don't need him. It would be overkill to get Benassi as well. I'm going to reject. I just I don't need him. There's no point signing someone for the sake of signing someone. We do not need him. However, Montalivo is going to be immediately replaced in my starting lineup by Jorginho. 
as you can see, we've got Kevin Prince Boateng. We've got uh, hopefully Mustali will go out on loan, but we've also got Bertolacci and Kutska. Verdi can play Cam, and Bonaventura can drop to a centre mid spot. I just do not need Benassi. We only needed one player, right? So that's another signing done on transfer deadline day. Is anything going to happen? Diego Godin to Chelsea, William Carvalho to Inter. 29 million and 21 million apiece. Still no offers for Montalivo. Nothing yet. Valdez has gone to PSG from, I believe that's a Mexican side. It's got the Mexican flag in a symbol, so it's going to be a Mexican side. Two hours to go. Still no biz. Voland has gone to Southampton. Axel Witzel has gone to Roma. That's a big signing. Someone going to bid? No. Alaba to Juventus. Of course, it had to at some point in the window, didn't it? Alaba to Juventus. So that's now the biggest transfer. Pastore to Arsenal. Lacazette. No offers for Montalivo, though. We've spent £16 million. No, that's not us. That's Fiorentina. What am I even talking about? I saw Bernadeschi and just immediately assumed it was me. Uh, we've spent 15.2, so we have spent near £16 million. Uh, We've sold a number of players. A few have gone out on loan. A few were part of uh, other deals. But no offers for Montalivo. So we will have to sell Montalivo in January if we want training injury. Of course. I sign him and he's out for six weeks. Well, maybe it's just as well. Montalivo didn't go yet then, isn't it? Oh, my God. Just my luck. Serie A C window is finished. Squad. Right. Oh, it's just cameras. 73 to 89. Okay, things are getting more positive here. His potential has gone from 66 to 86 to 73 to 89. His potential is growing, even though we're not doing anything with him. Please do let me know whether I should train him or whether I should wait until he turns 18. I will take your feedback into account with regards to my scout future star. After that win against Empoli, we are up to ninth in the table after two games. Genoa, Napoli, Torino and Lazio all have a 100% record. Juventus and Roma also unbeaten so far this season. Inter down in 12th, but only there on goal difference. In fact, their goal difference is exactly the same as ours. So uh, never mind. We've scored three, conceded three. Shouldn't have conceded those two against Empoli, though. But that's going to bring today's episode to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. The next game is Inter. Milan Derby is the first game in tomorrow's episode. But for now, that's going to bring us to a close. Thank you very much for watching. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel, too, if you haven't to this point. Check the channel page itself for anything you may have missed over the past few days. But for right now, I'll see you next time.